To kick off today's lab, we're using this machine to see what's in our breath. Your breath has lots of gases in it. Some are smelly, like hydrogen sulphide. It's made by the bacteria that live in your mouth, and it's what makes the bad smell when you let one rip. When it's mixed with the food and drink you've eaten, it can make your breath honk. Let's look at Chris's results. Chris, you have detectable levels of fishy cabbage smell in your breath. Oh, nice. Thanks, Sand. But actually, your breath can tell you much more than what you've had for dinner, as we're going to show you. What's going on? Who's this? This is Daisy. Am I being replaced? What are your qualifications? Sand, you're not being replaced. Daisy's here to help us with today's experiment, because your breath can reveal a huge amount about you. It can be the first sign of many illnesses, and, like your fingerprints, your breath is unique. No one else has the same breath. <sighs> it smells like doggy snacks. No. But I did find some lovely biscuits on the floor on the way in. Were they in a bowl? Yes. Did the bowl say Daisy on it? Yes. <sighs> now, everyone has bad breath at some point, even Daisy. <laughs> but even if your breath isn't bad, it still has a smell, and it's the smell that contains information about you and your health. So, if you have asthma, even though you can't smell asthma, your breath will have more nitric oxide in it, which you can detect. Or, if you have diabetes, your breath may have more of a compound called acetone in it. It's the same chemical that's in nail varnish remover. In fact, there's a whole range of medical conditions that can be detected on your breath. But not by us, even though we're doctors. Not by specialist medical researchers. Not even by complicated equipment. That's why Daisy is here. She's a specially trained smell dog tour. Daisy's been trained by Claire to detect serious illnesses like cancer in a person's breath. So, Claire, how does Daisy do it? Well, when people are unwell, they smell different. So some people have kindly donated their breath samples onto this tube. So they breathe in that and then the, the smelly molecules in their breath stick inside this sponge here. Absolutely. And then what we do is, in training, we show this sponge to Daisy and we've been able to train her to tell us if somebody has a very serious disease. <laughs> Time to see Daisy in action. Now, we've laid out three samples of breath here, and one of the samples is from a patient with a serious illness. Now, the one from the patient with the illness... Chris! Is... You can't say in front of Daisy. She'll hear. She's better find it herself. Son, she's a dog. She doesn't speak English. It's sample A. Now, Claire, should we set off Daisy and see if she can find it? Daisy, seek, seek. She's done it. And unbelievably, it took her just six seconds. That's amazing. There was no debate. There was no... She didn't even have to check one of the samples. Yeah, she yeah. knew... As soon as she smelt that odour, she sits down and tells us she's found it. So, while Daisy is special, she's not actually got any more smell receptors than any other dog. Take Sooty and Spike here. Although they might be better at sniffing out where their ball is than detecting illness, inside their noses they have 220 million smell receptors, whereas we only have 5 million. And there are other dogs like Daisy who've been trained to sniff out different medical conditions. So if someone has diabetes, for instance, and they have the wrong level of sugar in their blood, the dog can actually detect that and warn them to take their medication. <sighs> so although your breath can sometimes smell bad, its smell can also reveal vital information about your health. Claire, that was brilliant. Thank you so yeah, much for coming in. Daisy, you did such a good job. You understand, don't you?